Hi, I'm Phyllis and my website is southernfrugal.com. I have had a lot of requests uh, concerning collards and what they are. A lot of people don't know what collards are. They're sort of kin to uh, cabbage really and a cabbage that doesn't form into a ball but it opens up. So some of the collard plants could be as big around as a bushel basket, maybe even bigger. So what we do in the south is we cook the leaves. Now this is a little a smaller leaf. Let me get a big one here. I've already washed these. There's a bigger one. All right, so uh, what, you, what you do with collards, or this is what I do. When I get them home, I cut the bottom of the stems off and put them down in water and let them sit for about a day. They'll crisp right up like these. And I, I put these in a glass so I could show y'all. So uh, they'll turn real crispy if you do that, kind of like you would do cut flowers. So we're going to make them in the Instant Pot today. I've also had requests for that. So let me show you how to take the stems out. Now, a lot of people do not take the stem out except to about right there. I just go ahead and take it out because they cook faster. So what you do is just take that little bottom piece off because you're going to cook that. Turn the leaf. Can you all see that? That's the right side. Turn it to the back side and just take a hold of it with your hand and pull the stem right out. Now I have actually used these stems in smoothies because they grind right up really. And there you have it. So I took the stem right out by just pulling it out. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in the Instant Pot. Again, take that bottom off, turn it to the back side and just take a hold of it with your fingers. And with this hand, just pinch that stem. It'll come right out. See how crispy they are? And here's one of the inner leaves. And we'll do it the same way. And some of the inner leaves, if they're the real little ones, I'd go ahead and leave the stems in like that one. See, because that stem's going to be real tender. So will this one. See how light green they are? That was in the middle of the collard plant. All right, so we're going to do two of the big leaves now. Again, just turn them over, or you can line them all up and cut all the stems out at one time, or you can just chop them up and leave the stems there, but you do have to cook them a little bit longer if you leave the stems on. These actually will cook about the same way that cabbage cooks. They, You'd think it would take longer to cook these since they're such big leaves, but it actually takes longer to cook something like turnip greens or mustard greens. And I'm not sure why, but it does. All right, so I already have uh, pulled the stems off of these, so I'm gonna put these in the crock pot too. There we go. Now I'm not cutting them up until after I cook them. Now, a lot of people use, here in the South, use smoked uh, turkey wings and stuff like that, ham, fat back, all kinds of stuff in them. And I used to do that with the fat back, I did. But in uh, the last many years, I've started just uh, using the uh, light tasting olive oil, because you can't taste it. It gives you a little bit of oil in there. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit in there and also add a cup of water. And that's really all I do. So now I've got the Instant Pot. Let me turn it around so y'all can see. Now if I use my regular stove top pressure cooker, collards will actually cook in that pressure cooker in about three minutes. Same with cabbage, with green bean, fresh green beans. But on the Instant Pot, I don't think it, you, the pressure ever gets up that high. But, I mean, hey, it still works, okay? So we're going to put the lid on. I always like to make sure my little seal thing is in correctly. Because we always take that out when we wash it. All right, so put the lid on. There we go. And then we'll turn this little back button uh, to 
to the place where it is no steam. In other words, it's not going to be venting back there until I turn it the other way. So I'm going to use uh, the manual and I'm going to have it for just 10 minutes. And I'm going to let the uh, pressure go down on its own. All right, so it'll take a few minutes for it to come up to pressure. And once it does, I'm going to, it'll uh, cook for 10 minutes under pressure. And then I'm going to probably let it go down on its own while I get the rest of the meal ready. All right, y'all, we'll be back and show you what this looks like. I'm going to cut them up now after I've cooked them with the scissors. That's what I usually use. All right, we'll be back. All right, I checked my collards and went ahead and let the steam out to see if they were done. They need to cook a little bit longer, so I'm going to cook them for five more minutes and let the pressure kind of come down about halfway on its own. So I'm going to do manual, and I'm going to take it down to just five minutes. Oop. Just five minutes, and then let it... Uh, uh, just sit there and, and stay warm and still under pressure for a little while till I get everything else ready. I'm fixing some of those fried, uh, I called them hash brown sweet potatoes also. Again, they were that good. All right, y'all, we'll be back and I'll show you, uh, well, I can just tell you. Once the collards are done, I just put the scissors down in the pot and cut them up like that. Real easy to do. All right, we'll be back. All right, let's see if these uh, collards are done now. I went ahead and turned the vent uh, open because uh, I want to check them. Let me move y'all closer. There we go, like that. Yeah, I can tell by looking at them, they are definitely done. So remember, we did not uh, cut them up before we cooked them. And so now I'm going to cut them up with the scissors. And I'm not cutting them up a whole lot, just some. All right, can you all see that? Let me get closer. Maybe if I turn the light on. There, you can see them a little bit better. Yeah, they're all done now. All right, the only thing we did was use the light tasting olive oil, and I'm going to put a little bit of salt on them, and that's all we're going to do. All right, let me get this on the plates, and I'll show you what it looks like. We did make some of the sweet potato hash browns again. I almost burned them again, if you can believe that. And by the way, I did not use that little veggie all thing. I ended up using my box grater. That's what I ended up using simply because it went a lot faster. Plus it was real hard for me to hold that little, this little thing because I sprang my wrist and so this almost became impossible. Anyway, let me get this on the plate and we'll be back. All right, we are ready to eat. There are the collards, and they're cooked really perfect, but it did take 15 minutes in the Instant Pot, and then I let the pressure go down on its own for about four minutes. But they're cooked perfect, so you can see some of them. These are the stalks from the little baby leaves. There are the hash brown sweet potatoes, two fried biscuits for Mr. Bucky, and there are the meatballs. They look really dark because I used great jam but that's okay, and there's the uh, chow chow coleslaw, which is absolutely delicious and will go great with the collards. All right, there it is. And there's my plate, and I'm gonna have to do a video on making your own little meatballs with that uh, barbecue sauce. I'm gonna have to do that. Probably we'll be having that again maybe next week. It really only takes uh, a pound of um, lean hamburger and I use the panko, Italian uh, spiced panko uh, breadcrumbs. 
and just mixed it all up and used one egg to hold it all together. Anyway, I used a lot of the uh, grape jam, so they're almost black, but they're delicious. All right, y'all. We will see y'all next time. Bye for now.